Welcome to round four of the electric motorcycle build. I bought this total motorcycle at a salvage auction that had sat for over two years because everybody wanted to avoid it like the plague and they parked it in the back corner of the lot. Because everybody knows electric cars catch on fire way more common than internal combustion engines do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh, would you look at that? Man, I love hard data, and ah, I love the way that our media seems to spin stories better than most modern DJs. It's, it's truly remarkable. But this is the type of thing that made the entire salvage yard nervous. And that's how we arrived at me pulling it into the garage to try and fix it. I've been pulling it apart, checking every key wire and component, and eventually found that the MCU is, well... Uh, it looks like it caught the black lung working in the coal mine. But that's fine. While awaiting a new MCU and some capacitors, I decided, hey, why not add a paintball gun and a flamethrower for good measure, considering that nobody has done that before. And now, let's continue going through everything here, just to be safe and not sorry. Even though the slogan is normally safety third, I definitely do not want to win a Darwin Award and die alone in my garage. So let's do the thing. Let's do the thing. All right, so here's the thing with this. I was not originally going to go through the battery pack on this because I've now had it in my possession for about a month with no explosions or flames, and it is safe to say that it is okay. Furthermore, the crash happened well over two years ago. It didn't burn down the salvage yard either, so... I know that the battery most likely won't flare up on its own, but then we introduce me into the equation, and well, if it happens, we all know who the real problem is. Typically, if the impact when the bike is crashed was significant, the battery pack would be swollen, leaking, or have cracks or burn marks in it. Or, signs might be a little bit more obvious. And smell a little bit like New Jersey. Now, Thermal Runway is something I've had the distinct pleasure of witnessing firsthand a few times in my day. And it's not exactly an ideal event you want to be a part of. And for those that are not familiar, it's pretty much a recycling symbol of hot uh-ohs. This is when the current flowing through the cell cannot dissipate heat fast enough to keep up with the rate of its generation, which leads to a reduction in the electrical resistance which further leads to higher current, and that, again, leads to an even higher increase in temperature, aka heat creates exothermic reaction, thus increases the reaction rate, which creates heat, and on and on it goes until it fizzles out. That is a muffle of a cyclic, self-propagating process of hell. And if you want to know why I'm being more cautious than usual, here's a list. And it's because, curiously enough, essentially all of the things on this list could have occurred to this bike. And well, yeah. And yes, I've been essentially petting and stroking this battery pack for the entire conversation I'm having with you. So perhaps I'll stop that now and let's open this up and see what is the battery of choice for this unit. Because I'd like to know. All right, we've got the Shieto Pepio and Das Works Das Works Jörg for Bessier and uh, I'm not even going to attempt to butcher that in any way, shape, or form. Das Werkzeug für bessere Arbeitsergebnisse. Das Auto. Let's pull the battery apart and see what we got going on here. All right, so I have some comparisons here for your entertainment. This here is an 18650 cell from one of the many Teslas that was pulled apart years ago. You'll note that this is a 3.7 volt and Tesla constantly does attempt to improve their powertrain, being that 2170s and 4680 cells are the new way going forward for their packs. Larger in size, capacity, energy density, storage, charging speed, so on and so forth. Uh, oh wait, I think I do have another cell that I can show for, for comparison though. Boys, what are you guys doing? This is fine, I guess, but you, you cannot be lounging under the vehicle while I'm in need of going somewhere, so. Yahtzee. Even though the Rivian came out much later than Tesla, they were always running with the 18650 cells as well in their current packs. This one you'll, you'll note actually is 3.2 volts instead of Tesla's 3.7, but. <laughs> Supply is what it is, so. 
We definitely don't have any 4680s on hand right now, but that'd be nice. Hello, little sneak. Yeah, you wanna come sniff around, see what's going on here? Yeah, it's questionable, isn't it? I know. All right, let's pull this battery pack. Looks like we're gonna have to re-Loctite these nuts. They're, they're screws, that's, they're screws. Here's your blue. Hey, all right. And then let's see what we got. These are, I, I can already tell you these are much bigger. Look at this. Turns out these are not 18650 cells, but they're 2170, which does mean, of course, there's more capacity. They charge faster and last longer. I've seen these orange ones before. Um, on Ali Boo Boo. Since these are tab welded and uh, I can't just slide this out of the pack, it's probably glued in there some more. It's not swollen, so it's safe to say we are safe from harm. But to be safe, we won't take the precaution or tamper with this. And I mean, I could simply count the bottom rack and multiply by how many columns are probably here to figure out the total pack size, so. What we're going to do is I want to plug it in all the way, fully charge it, and then in the spirit of the salvage yard, I'm just going to drag it out to the field, abandon it for a while, just, just to be safe. Safety, safe. Plug it in, plug it in. All right, four pin connector. And then there's the fan. Sounds like it's a little dusty, but red means it's charging, so that's great. What we'll do is we'll leave that be for a while, and you know, I'm going to clean up some of the scuffs and, and scratches on the bike anyways, so. Let's grind and smooth the frame and drop some beats! Much, much, much later. Captain's log, we are now back over here. The Surons have not ignited. The battery has not blown up. But uh, look at that, green means go. It looks like we're at uh, 67.1 volts. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little while and I'm gonna go bring this to the field of dreams and leave it be. Just walk away. Oh, yeah, you wanna observe this? Both Romulus and the chickens do. All right, that's neat. Three days later. Yeah, well, the battery's not swelling, blown up, or anything of that matter. So, safe to say, after a full charge, we're okay. Things are going to be fine. And it even rained out here. I know some of you might be like, oh, well, that's not good. Well, Volcon isn't only the defender of the universe, but it's also of this pack. It has an IP67 rating, which on the ingress protection scale means that up to some of the highest levels of both solid and water ingress. They didn't skimp out on the rating as they wanted the bike to be able to go places that you can't even walk. So... If you aren't familiar with the IP or ingress protection rubric, I will put it right here for your convenience. Glad the battery is good. And as soon as that motor controller shows up, we will be able to start to plug it in and party, hopefully next week. So anyways, until then, we're going to continue to tinker on here and prep this bike and make it look cool. So I really want to thank you all for being here as always. And I hope that you have a lovely day. And I'll see you all soon. Hasta la pasta. Ciao. Das Werkzeug für bessere Arbeitsergebnisse.